Hi, my name is Heather, and today I'm going to show you how to make a single color SVG for Cricut Design Space in Adobe Illustrator. I'm using Adobe Illustrator for desktop. If you don't already have Adobe Illustrator, you can download the free trial using the link in the description. First, I'm going to import my sketch. I made a sketch in Procreate, so I'm just going to open it. And I'll have a link to the sketch in the description in case you want to download this sketch and follow along with me. Over here in the Layers panel, you can see that there's one layer and it has the sketch on it. If you don't see the Layers panel, just go to Window, Layers. This layer is going to be our sketch layer, so I'm just going to double click on it and I'm going to click template. So this is going to lock the layer so we don't move it around and it's also going to dim the image so that it's lighter so it'll be easier to trace over. You can also rename it if you want. So actually I can double click here and just name it sketch or you could have done it in the previous window. Then I'm going to add a new layer, which will be the layer that we draw on. So I'm going to click this new layer button and I'll rename it vector. And let's also save this too, because we always want to save as we go. So I'm going to go to file, save as, and we'll just save it as an Adobe Illustrator file. You can just leave these settings as their defaults and then click OK. Now, the main thing with drawing on the desktop computer is that you're not going to have your Apple Pencil, so you will need to kind of master the pen tool. It is going to seem weird at first, but the more you use it, the more you'll get used to it, and eventually it'll just become second nature. So I'm going to grab my pen tool up here. I'll just show you the basics of using the pen tool. So you're going to click where you want to start your line and you're actually going to drag and you'll see these weird handle things. So this handle is actually going to kind of tell Illustrator the direction that you want your line to go. So like if I pull it to the left, then my curve is kind of like starting out to the left. But if I were to pull it to the right, then my curve is going to go to the right. See, if you click and drag and then you click again and drag, then you'll really see how the handles work because you can pull your handle and you can see how it affects your curve. And you will get very used to the handles and then you'll really understand them and it'll make it really easy to edit vector files. So it is a really good skill to have. Even if you always draw in vector on your iPad with the pencil, you still need to really understand how these work because it's going to help you in the future. So we can just keep doing this to make our shape however you want your shape to be. And then to end your shape, you're going to mouse over the first node that you made and then you'll see the circle come up next to the cursor and then you just click and then drag. And the drag part is just where you're changing your handles. If you don't like any of this, you can always grab the direct selection tool and you can move these around, you can move the handles, you can just edit this however you need to. You can also delete some of these points. Like if you realize that you don't want some of these, you can just press the minus sign on your keyboard and just click on one to delete it. Of course, the plus sign gives you this tool that you can add anchor points. I would recommend just kind of messing around with that a little bit just so you kind of get an idea of it. And then I'm just going to grab my selection tool and I'll just delete that. If I go back to the pen tool, which actually I like to just press P on my keyboard, let's make it so we're only using a stroke and not a fill. So if we go over here to where there's the two color swatches, we can click on the fill one and that'll bring it to the front, which means we're now editing it. You can go over here to your color panel and if you don't see it there, just go to window color. Click this little box right here that has the red line going through it because that means we're going to have no fill. 
So now we have no fill and we just have the black stroke. And now we can start to trace around our drawing. I'll start right here and I'm just gonna click and drag. And then you wanna move your cursor over to where there's like a change in direction of the line. So like I would go maybe here because then I can click and drag and just make that curve right there. And then I could go up here and click and drag and then here. So this is a little curve. So you kind of want to go around that. And then I could go like all the way down here and just drag. So I have a nice curve there. And then we can actually just end this line because it doesn't really need to be a closed shape. We're just outlining. So I can actually just click escape on my keyboard and there is our line. Now I'm just going to hold down command and click and that gets us out of it. So if you hold down command, you get your node select tool, which is really nice because, you know, it can be annoying like to keep changing between the tools. So that's why I like to do this, just hold down command and if you need to do any editing, you can. And then you can just click away and then when you let go of command you have your pen tool again and of course on the windows you would be using control not command now we can just continue doing our outline and this is a really good exercise for you to do if you are new to this drawing because by the time you're done with this drawing you should be more a little more comfortable with it now this is a tricky part because we don't want to just click and drag because see it's going to pull out that left section so instead, since this needs to be kind of a special point, I'm going to hold down Alt and then click and drag. And what that does is it's going to leave this part up here the same so that it's, it's not going to affect it. And this is kind of a lot to remember, so you can just forget about that if it's too confusing. You could just do it the regular way and then just hold down command and then just pull this anchor point back in if you want to. That's up to you. There are a lot of little tricks that you can learn, but it is a lot to learn in the beginning. So if you take anything out of this, just let it be, you know, how to make your lines and how to edit your points. So we'll just go through and finish off the rest of these. Oh, and here's another tip while you're drawing if you make a point that you don't like. So say that I were to do all of these and then all of a sudden I'm like, I don't like that point. I can just press undo, which is command Z or control Z on Windows. And then that will undo the last point that you made. And then you can just carry on. Here's another tip. So if you're trying to add something that's near one of your other lines. And for example, I just finished this line, so it's selected. And if I were to try to add this line here, and if I wanted to start here, it's gonna try to add a point. Or if I wanted to start a new line, like right here, and not have it connected, then it's going to try to connect it to that line. So whenever there's weird stuff like that, like where it's near something else it's gonna try to connect, I'll just start at the other end and that way I don't have to worry about it being weird. Or I'll just start somewhere else on it. So you may just need to kind of be selective with where you start your lines so that you don't run into any weird situations like that. Oh, and one other thing that I forgot to mention is that I told you how to do a shape with click and drag, but I forgot to tell you that if you just click, then that makes it like pointy so there is no curve and then if you click and drag you make a curve so if you have any pointy parts so like for example the tip of this grass you can actually click on this point so that now we're in kind of a pointy mode and not a curve mode and then you can click again if you want it to be like straight and then you can curve and then you can do another curve and then whenever you want it straight, you just click and click, click, click. And then for the eye, let's actually use a shape for that since it is a circle. 
So I'm going to go to my rectangle tool and let's press and hold so we get the ellipse tool. And I'll just make a oval like this. And then while you're making it, if you hold down the space bar, then you can move it around wherever you want to. And then let go when you're ready. And then we can do the circle that's inside. For the circle inside, we actually want that one to be filled. So let's go over to our swatches here and click these two little arrows. So we're going to swap the fill and the stroke. So instead of the fill being nothing and the stroke being black, we'll have the fill be black and the stroke is nothing. Let's grab everything except for that circle. So I'm gonna hold down shift and click the circle to take it out of my selection. And now I have all of the lines that I made. And first let's bring the stroke up so that he just has a thicker stroke. And then also I don't really like how this is like flat at the end of these lines. So I'm going to go to my stroke panel, which again, you can go to window and then stroke if you don't see it. And I'm gonna change my cap to round and corner to round as well. And then this just makes everything all nice and round. And now I can hide my sketch layer. So I'll just click this little visibility marker right here. And I do see some parts where my stroke kind of goes past a little bit. So I'm going to press the letter Z on my keyboard, click and drag to zoom in. And then I'll grab my node select tool and I'm just going to pull that up and I'll pull this in. And make sure you're grabbing just the node and not the whole line when you do that. So you have to click on the node and then drag it. Now that we have all that done, we can mess around with our lines a little bit and make them variable width just to make them look a little more natural like they were drawn with a pen. To do that, find your width tool, which is like this. It kind of looks like half a mustache or something. So click on that and then you can just find anywhere on your line that you want to be a little bit thicker and you can click and drag it or you can make it thinner if you like kind of push it in and then you can find like another point on your line and make it thicker if i press escape and get out of it then you can see how it's like thinner and then it gets thicker so it looks really cool like as if it was actually drawn with a pen so i like to go around and just do this with all my lines another thing you can do which is kind of a little bit of a quicker thing is click on a line and then you can go over here and where it says profile you can actually just pick one of these so I could pick like this one here and then you can see it gets thinner towards the ends or I could pick this one or that one and you can kind of mess around because the different ones look different and after you do it, you can also go back to your width tool and modify it even more. So like, I don't like it getting that skinny at the end, so I can just make the end a little bit thicker. Now that we have everything how we want it, we just have to do our final formatting steps. So if you select everything, then you can see that it's all strokes and we need to change it to a fill. Before I do that, I actually like to save it as a different file because I always like to save this version of the file since the lines are editable. I can like grab my select tool and I can move stuff around if I want to. And once we convert this, you won't be able to do that anymore. So it just helps to have this version in case you want to do anything with it for a future project or anything like that. So let's go ahead and save this one we can do save as we're going to save it as our new file which we can name it like triceratops shape because we're going to make it into all one shape or whatever else you want to name it so then i'll just click save and okay and so now this is our new file so now we can make our changes 
So with my select tool, I'm just going to grab everything and I'm going to go to object, expand appearance. And then as you can see, it changed it to all shapes. But if we zoom in, then we'll see that all these shapes like overlap. And if you've used the Cricut before, you know, the Cricut would just cut those out and those would be like little holes. So we don't want that. We want it to all be one shape. So then we're going to go to the Pathfinder and you can find that under Window, Pathfinder. We're going to click this first shape mode right here, which is like two overlapping solid shapes. So we're going to click that and it's going to combine it all into one shape. So now if you zoom in, you can see that it's just all one shape and there's no weird like overlapping lines. And the last thing that we want to do is we need all of the pieces to come through as one shape and not like multiple shapes grouped together. So the way it is right now, the eye would come in as a shape all by itself and then the rest would be separate. So to fix that, we're just going to have everything selected and we're going to go to object, compound path, make. And now this is all going to be one shape all together. Also, we want to delete our sketch layer. So just click on that and you can click delete. And now we just have the one layer with our one thing on it. So now we can go file, save, and then we want to save an SVG. So we'll do file, save as, we're going to pick SVG and save. Now let's go into Cricut Design Space and we can import it to make sure that it comes through correctly. And this is a very important step because you might find that there are some weird little like extra shapes that imported or something that you need to go back to your SVG and edit it. So we're gonna do new project and upload, upload image, browse, and I'll pick my SVG and open and upload. And then now let's add to canvas. And as you can see, it all came through correctly and it's all on one cut layer. So it looks good. Keep an eye out for the next video where we will add color to our SVG. And then I'll also show you how to add text. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments or you can always email me at heather at heathercash.com and also let me know if there's any requests that you have for videos, anything that you'd like to learn that I haven't covered. Have fun making your SVGs. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.